The art of long snapping is really just mental and how you're able to handle the big moments. When your number's called and you only have one shot to get it done on a big pressure moment, you get it done. Giants trying to take the lead on a bar field goal from 21 yards. Long snapping is about being willing to put the work in to get good at it and then having the nerve to get it done when it counts. The technique and everything's got to be right. You got to always work on that. I'm still working on it to this day, every day. And there's more strategy to it now because your center's got to block. Coaches, special teams coaches on other teams are constantly trying to find something that can screw up the reads and then block a punt. And, and it's a, a, a little mini chess match. Former Giants defensive coordinator and special teams coach Bill Belichick credits Steve DiAssi with revolutionizing the position of long snapper. Belichick claims that Steve was the first player to be able to snap the ball, block at the line of scrimmage, and make a play 40 yards downfield. Well, first off, I was tricked into it because the special teams coach asked me if I could block somebody after I snapped, and I thought that's how they did it in the NFL, so I said, sure. Uh, two days later, I realized he was designing it on the fly, so we designed it together on how to do it and how to read it and what a snapper can be capable of doing. It's not just snap the ball and let the kicker kick it. It's everybody seeing what's in front of them and, and making it happen. He instantly picked it up uh, when he started doing it. I could see right away he was capable of doing it. He won't give up on the idea of making tackles. I don't think there's anyone that even has one third of the tackles that he's had as a long snapper over the last 10 years because he just loves it. But the most surreal thing is like, you could, most could argue that he reinvented the position, as much as I hate to admit it, that might, may or may not be true, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> what do you, Bill Belichick said it, it's gotta be true. Right, right, whatever. You know, that's a wild thought when I take the time to step back and think about it, which mm. is, so thank you for your stupidity back in 84. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for being naive enough to, <laughs> to say yes, volunteer for everything. I volunteered to return punts, they didn't bite on that, so I, I just volunteered for everything, so. Every snapper is different. My technique's totally different from his. I looked at his 44 millimeter tape <laughs> back in the day. I mean, I didn't That's learn anything was. from him uh, technique-wise, but mentally I learned everything from him. The one thing that I've told Zach is that that bad snap doesn't matter. The only one that matters is the next snap. The way I viewed it early is I gotta be right for my guys, for my punter and my kicker. And if I'm not there for them, then that's on me and I'm, I'm affecting what they're trying to do. Mastering the art of long snapping also involves working on the subtle differences between snapping for a field goal and snapping for a punt. Punts, you have to block. So that's a full body, you know, longer snap and you gotta get it out there with velocity and then get back and find your man and block. Field goal, you're stationary, it's more statuesque and more arms and wrist and then you just hang on with your guards and hope for the best. You know, they're bringing the house, you gotta brace for impact and meet force with force. Usually you have your guards locking their, putting their legs behind yours so you're a little more secure and, and that helps too because they can basically roll you over and, and do whatever they want, so. They've been changing the rules since you played. Yeah, they, well, they should. They've taken care of us. They should. Beat and I took on that. <laughs> Reg, Reggie White used to apologize to me before the snap for what he was about to do to me. <laughs> And then there's that part on punts yeah. and field goals where yeah. you hear a lot of chatter. Oh yeah, the, the so, chatter all the time. But that's the beauty of the game right, right. there. The oh. beauty of long snapping is once you fulfill a, a snap, hold, yeah. kick, uh, you successfully get it done, block, and do your job, you can let loose and pretend to be a linebacker for a little bit. Which is exactly what you do after the punts. Which is a great, great way to keep it fun. <laughs> And it's his way of grabbing a little, grabbing a little bit of the old linebacker in him, and uh, and he's, he's street cred, trying to get the street cred. <laughs> it's, it's a long snap of street cred. Steve Diossi began his football career in 1984 when he was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in the fourth round. He played five seasons in Dallas as a linebacker and long snapper, where he earned a reputation as a steady, hard-hitting defender. He also earned the respect of Giants head coach Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells used to tell me when we when he played the Cowboys twice a year, yeah, you don't belong down here in, in Dallas. You're a Northeast guy, you know, having grown up in Boston and everything. But don't worry, we're gonna get you up to we're gonna get you back up to the Northeast. Don't worry about it, we'll get you. And it turned out that uh, when he had the opportunity, he was true to his word, he got me up here and, and uh, I just remember how how tough and resilient that team was and, and how everybody had one goal and I was told by more than one veteran. 
we're here to win championships. In 1990, his second season with Big Blue, Diossi and the Giants defeated the Buffalo Bills 20 to 19 in Super Bowl 25. No Winning a championship was the crowning moment of Steve's NFL career. But Zach, who was six years old at the time, didn't quite grasp the magnitude of his father's achievement. I do remember him winning the Super Bowl, us watching from our television in Massachusetts. My mom, my two sisters, and then me, the only boy at six years old. Uh, it was cool, but um, I didn't understand the whole, the, the grandeur of it. Steve played three more seasons with the Giants and finished his NFL career in 1995 as a member of the New England Patriots. Zach was then 11 years old and had begun playing football himself, and Steve took an immediate interest in his son's love for the game. The one thing that we always talked about was having fun. You're not playing football to win a scholarship, to make it to the pros, to, uh, to make a million dollars. You're playing football because you love to play it. Zach attended the Phillips Academy in Andover, Massachusetts, where he was the captain of both the basketball and football teams during his senior year. At Brown University, he was named first team all Ivy League three years in a row and led the Bears to an Ivy League championship in his junior season. In 2007, the New York Giants selected him in the fourth round of the NFL draft. When the Giants called, I mean, it was just a dream come true. My dad's best years there, he won a Super Bowl there. You know, I, I walked in here with big dreams of being a linebacker and contributing in any way, shape, or form I could and trying to be the best linebacker I could. And had you told me that I was going to be a long snapper in the NFL um, when I was a freshman in college, I would have laughed. If you told me the day before the draft, I would have laughed right in your face. Mm -hmm. But. Um, Fate intervened and, and uh, unfortunately the long snapper at the time hurt his Achilles for my first day of training camp and I, that's when I took over long snapping duties. Once he uh, decided to snap, I just looked at it like everything else he did in his life. He, once he made a decision, he was going to work his butt off to, to be very good at it. I found a position that, that I, can, I can contribute to the team, be a part of the team. In his first season with the Giants, Zach got the opportunity to be a part of something few rookies get to experience, playing in a Super Bowl. Rookie year, and we're playing my hometown team that I grew up watching. And was a ball boy for And him. was a ball boy in high school, my junior and senior year. So half the guys were still there when I was a rookie in the league, playing for the Patriots. They're undefeated, no one's given us a chance. I'm in the game and I have half the Patriots punt return team telling me that I'm going to mess up and then get them a Gatorade ball boy, <laughs> still referring to me as ball boy. But Zach would get the last laugh as the Giants defeated the Patriots 17 to 14 in Super Bowl 42. And that is it. The New York Giants have knocked off the New England Patriots with the most improbable win in recent memory. I don't think very many people expect it at all. The Patriots must have been eight, nine point favorites, something like that. And just the bedlam looking for him and and getting the hug and it just, it didn't even really sink in until a little while later, you know, and, and we had a chance to sit down and, and just kind of look at each other and say like, what the hell just happened? We're the only father, son, and one one for the same franchise. Yep. And we'll always be the first. That's right, no matter what, we're the first. That's right. We got that going got to, At least. Which is nice. Right, I, I agree, I agree. It's you just, know? It's, it's fantastic. Steve and Zach Diossi are the only father and son in NFL history to win a Super Bowl with the same team. But they also have the distinction of being the only father and son to snap the football on a game-winning field goal in an NFC Championship game. Steve's special moment came in the 1990 postseason when the Giants were facing the two-time defending Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers. But it was everything you hoped for as a football player, a chance to win a ball game at the end, especially against a team who just won two championships and who beat us during the regular season. New York place kicker Matt Barr provided all the scoring that day for the Giants, connecting on four field goals through three and a half quarters. And Steve Diossi delivered flawless snaps while providing perfect protection. 46 yards out, line drive by Barr is good. He's three for three. 
13 12 the 49ers lead with 547 left to play and in the game's last seconds New York drove deep into 49ers territory giving Barr and Diossi one final shot to send the Giants to the Super Bowl and it all goes on his shoulders I remember thinking fully that there is nobody I know I would, that I would rather have kicking the ball right now than Matt Barr. Timeout 49ers. Let him think about it a little bit. They call a timeout. I'm just going over to Matt. And, you know, hey, Matt, Matt, they can't ice you. What are, you, what are they trying to do? They, that's silly. Why do they even bother trying to ice you? He looks at me and goes, no, you got to snap the ball. They're trying to ice you. Back, spot. Kick is away. It's got the distance. It is. If you watch after that kick, the one person you look at who has the best smile and sums everything up is Maurice Carthon. That smile on his face sums up exactly what everybody on that team was thinking right then and there. Like, oh, we got away with this. It's a, and we're going. It's just, it was the best. The best. It, it, it was just hard to describe. Just hard to describe. And, and when I saw him lining up for the same field goal in the same situation, I just couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Zach's moment came 21 years later on the same field against the same team. Weatherford to hold, Diossi to snap from 31 yards to put the Giants in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. Same end zone, candlestick. Um, we're in overtime, it's a little wet. We get a delay a game. I snap the ball, Steve puts it down, and one of their defenders jumped over me and Chris Snee. Like, had a clear run of the ball. Lawrence didn't didn't kick it. So had that been not a delay a game, I mean, who knows? Uh, back it up, redo the kick, and uh, I throw a little squirrely ball back there. Weatherford grabs it, puts it up, hits it. Snap is low, kick on its way, it's got the distance, and it is good! And Lawrence Tynes has done it again, he's kicked the Giants to the second Super Bowl in four years. And all hell broke loose. You know, you, 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 you know the big kick's going to come at some point in, in the year um, to, to have it be the one that goes into the Super Bowl and then realize it's the same end zone. I mean, ridiculous. And everyone remembers Weatherford's response uh, when he was running downfield after those. Yeah. Just incredible. Yep. Incredible. Yep. And I must have hugged 40 people that I didn't know when that happened. People look at me like, what are you doing? I'm like, and, and I'm pointing to everybody. I'm like, that was the same end zone. They have no idea what I'm talking about. They have no <laughs> okay. idea. Like, so my son, the same end zone. I'll tell the story. Goal, uh, uh, you know, it's the same. And they're like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. yeah. And they're backing we away We tell the slowly. story to, to patrons yeah. or whoever. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, whoever wants yeah. to listen. Whoever was, has the time. And they're just like, so what? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so what? That doesn't Don't you happen. get it? <laughs> Two weeks later in Super Bowl 46, the Giants defeated the New England Patriots in dramatic fashion. Incomplete, and the ball game's over, and the Giants have won Super Bowl 46. And father and son once again shared a Super Bowl celebration. It's just a mayhem, and all of a sudden I just get whacked, and he <laughs> came running and sprinted and tackled me. Confetti all and, stuck in our face, uh, just oh. and, the, and we're crying, and yeah. the, the first thing you know, once we can get words out around this, Dad, 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 I have two rings. <laughs> You only have one? <laughs> and he's like, no, 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 no. Like real father, like, no, no, no. The Diossi's, the Diossi's have three. Oh, you kidding. <laughs> you so <laughs> right. <laughs> the football careers of Steve and Zach Diossi have spanned over two generations and have provided their family and Giants fans with many fantastic moments and fond memories. All right, Dad, so this is where we keep the trophies. Oh, nice. All right. Look at this. All right, before we get to those, yep. we'll count those later. From the this? 1990 NFC Championship game, 90 season, yep. Matt Barr, drilled Sam Fran. Haas. Okay. LT. And then, look at this. Yep. 20. Yep. There's Weatherford there and Tynesy right after the, they kicked right after the, the same kick. kick. In the same end zone. Yeah, there it is. That was outstanding. That, right. was, that was ridiculous. And of course the trophies. They, they all look identical, but 
Why does this one say best Giants team ever? I don't understand why. Why would it say that? See, look, look. See the small print right down there? Yeah. I was proud of this. I was even more proud of these. The, the, to watch you win those and your teammates and the way you guys did it. That, that Hard to beat that. Watching your son win those beats that all day. All day. It's the best. Being a part of this franchise is just great. You, know, you hear stories of other places to play and, and there's certain ways you can run a ship and et cetera and teach their own, but we couldn't have been luckier to have a sniff at this place and, and you pour your heart out on the field, they take care of you. We got a whole mural here of the last Super Bowl. That's awesome. There's your boy. There you go, look at that. That's a great picture. All right, let me show you the uh, locker room. A nice job with it. Oh, and all the names of some of the great players, Rodney, OJ. Nice. And I know she got a ton of stuff in each locker, too. Yeah, they're pretty generous. Keeping us, uh, keeping the swag. You had the same locker? Same locker since the building opened. Really? Right here. Every player gets an iPad, and all the film that you could ever want, you can put right on here and sift through it seamlessly. Really? Yep, game plans, schedules, everything right here. That's outstanding. A little different from when you played? Yeah, mm -hmm. we had a chalkboard. <laughs> We're going to the indoor facility. I don't think they had an indoor facility when you played here. Yeah, look at this. Whenever it rains or it's like too ridiculously cold out, we come right. in here. And this is pretty cool. They get put all the Super Bowl banners. I'm on these two. It's the Aussie, seven, yeah. 11. And you're down on that one over there. That's pretty cool. Every now and then I'll be, you know, glaring up there and I'll see your name and it's like ridiculous. It's surreal. And then mid-practice, New guys will come in from whatever team or new rookies. Right. And, and even years later, if they've been with the team for three or four years, they'll, uh, they'll come up to me on this field, like during practice, like, it, I know, I see you up there, but did your brother play? <laughs> right. And I'm right. like, no, that's my dad. They're like, no way. Come on. Oh, OJ, Baker. Banks. Oh, I forgot about Roger Brown, of course. Oh, Maurice Carthon, the best. Well, this is it, Dad. Yeah, it's awesome. Hopefully this we is, get this another thing. banner up there. I'm proud that two Massachusetts kids could uh, come in here and, and contribute yeah. this much yeah. to this amazing story franchise. And that, that's something we should always be proud of. Agreed. Hey Giants fans, Saquon Barkley here. You want to see more videos? Subscribe below.